Hey, this is not Sir A, this is the Tier 8 Premium Japanese Cruiser Otago. It has 10 main guns, 8 secondary guns, 36 AA guns, 16 torpedoes, a top speed of 35.5 knots, total hull 40,100. For my modules, reduce crit chance on main battery, increase main battery accuracy, reduce flood and fire chance, faster auto shift and concealment. For my commander, situation awareness, basic firing training, faster turret traverse, superintendent, demolition expert, and concealment. We are on the map Ocean, and there's not going to be any islands to run into this game. Sorry to disappoint you. So we are three minutes in. I avoided a lot of the downtime of Ocean. We were looking for destroyers. That's exactly what we found. Friendly destroyer ran into the enemy destroyer, and the enemy destroyer has his propulsion knocked out. I'm trying to assist in the kill. I believe this destroyer doesn't have last stand. He looks a little sluggish. Although, he doesn't look too sluggish, right? So he might actually have last stand. He disappears, unfortunately. And we are out in the open. Looks like a battleship wanted to fire on our position. Very far away. Yeah, it was a Tirpitz. The enemy shows back up because we have a great CV commander. He's able to spot him out. We are able to engage him. This is perfect play. This is what you need from your CVs. And he's very close, so I should be able to get a little bit of damage. Yeah. We knock out steering. He's basically going to die. Who's going to get the kill? Now, I prefer at this point... Yes, good. I prefer if someone else on my team gets the destroyer kill. I do not need the destroyer kill anymore. I need fires. But I will not ignore a target that is not taking damage for 10, 15, 20 seconds. It needs to die. Destroyers, to me, are the most important class. If you take them out of the fight, it completely changes the way you play against the enemy and the enemy plays against you. The destroyer can obviously spot without being spotted. That's a huge advantage. They can send out torpedoes that will deny territory. And as a cruiser, I'm in a seek and destroy mode whenever there's a destroyer alive on the enemy team. Case in point, the Farragut is still alive. So we are going directly to his section of the map, going to assist in killing him, maybe get the kill, right? Take him out of the match. We've got great CVs, or at least one great CV, that is constantly keeping him spotted. Whether they plan it or not in this scenario is definitely planned on the other destroyer. It might just be a coincidence that they're engaged over the destroyer, and I'm calling it out. Come on, guys, this destroyer is probably 10 kilometers away from four friendly vessels, 10 kilometers is a very reasonable range to engage a destroyer at. Pretty much everyone should be able to hit him a little bit. You only need a little bit of damage from all four to take him out of the match. And it looks like the Turpitz does try to fire on him, but the Turpitz also overextends and dies. That's unfortunate. I'm not quite in range, so I want to get a little bit of fire on the Turpitz. Remember, I'm working on the fire, so I'm looking to get the front of this turpitz, yeah, we don't get the front. We get 3k. But now, I'm looking at the Farragut, I'm like, 10 kilometers. Hmm. We could switch to that. So I get one last shot, hoping for a fire, and the Farragut is still moving towards me. This is a perfect opportunity to do exactly what I settled to do. Put pressure on him, maybe kill him. He shows a lot of his side, eight kilometers away. This is a perfect shot for the Otago, and obviously we fire, and we get the front, yes, perfect location. Couldn't have asked for a better shell positioning on a destroyer. We were able to do a ton of damage. He has propulsion knocked out, he's firing at us, and I'm getting a lot of lag or whatever stuttering, but I'm trying to spread it out, I only need one shell, and that's exactly what happens, we get one shell. There was 15 seconds of the target basically available for anyone to take, no one seemed to want to do it, so you gotta take him out. You can't leave him up, he's too much of a threat. So we're doing all right. We've eliminated one entire class from the enemy team. Carriers can also fill the role of a destroyer for their team, so it's not quite as safe as it could be for our destroyers. But right now it doesn't look like the enemy aircraft carriers are that interested in hunting down and identifying the friendly destroyers. And quite honestly, it doesn't look like the enemy team would assist in killing the destroyer. We are, of course, engaging this Bogami. 12 kilometers. It's a little far away, but 
we can make it work. We're trying to get those fires. We're not quite as successful as we'd like. We are doing pretty good damage, though. Now, if you look at the mini-map, it appears that there are a couple enemy cruisers that are coming up to the northern side of the map to either engage us, support their teammate, because maybe they don't want to see him die. That would be a pretty good reason, right? Or they're looking for something else to do because the battleships are firing at long range. How many games have you been in where battleships are near their max range and everything in between is just getting annihilated? It's very frustrating. I like to avoid those scenarios where they get bogged down. The western side of Land of Fire is one of those. And I'm too aggressive to continue firing even though I could just stay hidden for a really long time and ambush. I should do that more often, but I tend to not do that. Right now, I'm actually taking fire from one of those cruisers. If you noticed really quickly, he's about nine kilometers away. Very easy. This is perfect opportunity to use the torpedoes that Notzer never uses. And even when given an opportunity, I still hold off. Now, this Pogami needs to die. He's just barely inside of my range. I fire one last shot, trying to get him before he moves out of range. And yes, of course, the fire goes out. Can we hit him? We're trying. We take a huge citadel from something, probably a battleship. I finally choose to send out my torpedoes. This Otago is kind of maneuvering. He's got a ton of torpedoes around him. It's probably the worst time to send out torpedoes when a ship is maneuvering for torpedoes because you don't really know exactly where they're committing. Now, we probably won't hit him, but we might hit someone behind him. You never know. A lot of people don't pay attention when they should. I've been guilty of looking away from the screen and that half a second delay on starting the rudder shift is the difference between me living or dying. Now, we fire HE in a scenario where AP would probably be a better ammo type, but I am leaning on using HE more than probably you would in every scenario because of the 300 fire requirement. Normally, this is a perfect AP scenario right here on this Alba. I would load AP and try and penetrate, but uh, never mind. And I'm really trying to make use of my torpedoes. Probably last week, I would not have sent those torpedoes and I would not have gotten that Alba kill. Now I'm engaging the Atago. It's the only ship I could fire on, right? Friendly appears to be taking a torpedo attack. I have defensive fire up, I have my aircraft up, I'm doing everything I can to help him out. But it doesn't look like it's going to help because he's going to run into that torpedo. It looked like he just about avoided it, but he wasn't successful. He takes it right on the ship, and we can see that he has a dot on him. Probably doesn't have damage control available. So, we're going to lose him. Now it's just going to be me and a destroyer on this flank. I need to be careful. I'm still engaging in a Tago at extreme range. It's not an easy shot, although I should hit this target more often than I am currently. We are able to avoid, which is 50% of the engagement, but he avoids most of it too. Wow. I did not realize my destroyer buddy is so low. He's going to be completely useless. He's going to have no interest whatsoever in showing himself ever, which is fine. I don't want him to die. I would rather him stay alive. Maybe he can send out torpedoes. I don't know but he cannot sustain any damage at all. And that Mogami shows back up. I'm gonna switch to the Mogami. I don't care about anything else if I get one shot on the Mogami. And it looks like he realizes it. He's trying to move away. We're trying to kind of spread the fire to catch him. Uh, it's really annoying whenever they're like this because they're so desperate. He's gonna do everything to survive. And we're getting closer and closer and closer to this Otago. And we should definitely consider using torpedoes soon. I believe those were ship launch torpedoes where we get a fire. Good, yay. Yay, six fires. And we're doing everything we can to get fires. Oh boy, this is gonna take forever. <laughs> I'm probably at 30 or 40 fires total. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a while. We chain fire, we're unsuccessful. Enemy torpedoes, ship launched, probably from that Otago, quite honestly well out of range. Remember, the Otago has a range of 10 kilometers on those torpedoes. So even if I sent them out right now, I would not be in range. The enemy turrets sustained, I think, a torpedo. Yeah, he dies. Now, we have a clear advantage at this point. 
I could rush the opponent. My heal is about to come back up. Of course, I'm going to use it as soon as I can. We're looking for that fire. Oh, we are just missing bad. I'm so sorry. The friendly, no! They spot out the destroyer. Our aircraft's doing everything we can. We're trying to stay in range to help them out. Live, destroyer buddy, live! Here comes the next dive bomber. Our aircraft is already engaging it. For some reason, it's going after us and not the destroyer. I don't, I don't know why you would do that. But of course, it lands right on us. I'm going to use my damage control. I can't risk taking too much dot damage from the fire. But as the dive bomber is leaving, we're able to take out two aircraft. Yeah. And part of the issue of the enemy team they still have that Mogami. Yeah, that Mogami is basically refusing to participate. He is a dead ship for all intents and purposes. Now that we are actually in range to see him, either he's being spotted by a friendly or we're actually in range to see him, we are going to fire on his position. And I think he just gave up. He didn't try to maneuver. Maybe he didn't see it coming, but we finally kill that annoying Mogami. We sustain AP. It sounds like it ricochets off the back. The angling of the deck, it all worked in our favor. And more incoming rounds still need to maneuver as best as we can. We land a little bit of HE. Not too much. We don't get a fire. A fire is very helpful, obviously, but especially helpful on cruisers. There we go. Two fires, just like that. Now, does he have damage control? I don't think he does. Oh, that's just devastating. Two fires on a cruiser? Look at his health melt. We got a couple on the enemy base. Although I don't believe they'll be able to capture because they'll probably be spotted by aircraft. Friendly lands a huge shot on the Otago, and we really don't do much damage. Our fire's doing a ton of damage though. Four, 500 points every tick, and we kill him with the fire. I'll take it. I'm not complaining. That's what I set out to do, is set fires. The Independence is finally within our range. You can just see they're all next to the edge of the map. They're trying, they're trying their best, but it's just not gonna work out. We set another fire to go along with our ally and he uses his damage control. Now he was immune to that fire, but I think because it was set, I still benefit for the mission. Now we're just trying to finish him off. Uh, we're not aiming quite as far as we need to. Yep, just a little bit short. He's maneuvering south. One good technique is to pay attention to the minimap and predict where he's moving based on his icon position. That can kind of help you aim too. But right here, honestly, I was firing off a feel. I was just trying to predict where he wanted to maneuver and I was also trying to spread the fire a little bit, chain fire them, so he didn't really have a safe area to maneuver. And we earn Confederate on that shot. Oh, he's barely alive. Who's gonna get the kill? We get the kill. We get Unleashed Kraken with that kill. And this Ranger's probably at half speed, if that, stuck on the edge. There's really nothing he can do. Trying to set fires. That's really what I would love, fires on his deck. We've gotten 10 fires and we've set out to set fires. That's the sad thing. This is with me doing everything in my power to set fires. That Turpitz is still alive though. There we go, there's a fire. He immediately uses his damage control. Possibly his engine was knocked out. Looks like the torpedo's gonna smack right into him. And he's taken out by that torpedo. Wow, that was a good torpedo. And just the Turpitz left. He might actually take this torpedo, but I think he's gonna avoid it. It'll be close. Nope, nope, he definitely took it. He's also on fire, so he's probably flooding too. It looks like he's used his heal. We're trying to spread the fire. Come on, get the fire. He actually fires on us, interestingly. Even though there's a destroyer with no health, and I know he's spotted because there's aircraft over him. It's just weird. That would be an easier kill. Who's gonna get the kill? We fire, and we land it, and we take him out. He killed the destroyer, that poor destroyer. He survived the entire game at a sliver of life, only to die in the last second. So, six kills, Confederate,
Kraken Unleashed, 784,000 credits earned, that's the real juicy part, 2,422 base XP, a solid long-range engagement on ocean with no islands to run into. We did around 105,000 points of damage. It, it was a good game. I enjoyed this game. I was trying for fires. I didn't get quite the fires I wanted, but I'll take six kills any day and that credit income. I hope you enjoyed seeing the Otago on ocean. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.